Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about strategies for searching the library databases for popular and scholarly articles. So this is going to involve putting together a search, a really effective one that's going to help you find what you need, limiting your results to relevant categories like peer-reviewed articles, and also getting the full text and saving the articles that you find. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the library's website. If you're not familiar with this, this is lib.colostate.edu. You can see it up here. And I'm going to be going into the A to Z database list, which is listed right here under the default search box. And the A to Z database list is the complete list of databases that are available to you as a CSU student. It is something like 367. You can see the number at the bottom of the screen. Um, but we're going to be focusing on one today, and we're going to be looking at the database called Academic Search Premier, which is the first one listed under Starting Points. So here's Starting Points. I'm going to go ahead and click on Academic Search Premier. Academic Search Premier is a really good one for CO150. And by the way, if you're off campus, it might ask you to sign in. You just sign in with your EID and password. It's just like everything else, like Canvas. And Academic Search Premier is a general article database. So it has articles about basically any topic. So regardless of what your topic is, or if you're focusing on a particular disciplinary area, you should be able to find something in this database. It also has both popular and scholarly articles. So you should be able to find both in this database. In terms of how you search it, library databases are a little bit different than something like Google. In Google, no matter what you put in, like a full inquiry question, um, several words, uh, nonsense, you're going to get millions of results. They might not be relevant, they might not be credible, you might spend a lot of time looking through them. Um, but the difference is in the library databases, you usually need to spend a little bit more time thinking about how you're going to search. And then when you put together a good search, you spend a lot less time sorting through results that don't have much to do with your topic or that aren't credible. So the basic idea for doing a search in this database is we're going to put one specific, precise um, word, that word or small phrase that describes our topic in each search box. So um, for example, frequently when searching for articles for CO150, students start with a big, broad topic. So for example, I'm going to type in health disparities. And this might be a good place to start. And you can see when I get some results, I have almost 18,000 results. That's a lot. And also, when I'm looking through these, you might be able to see this. I might notice that these articles don't have a lot to do with each other. Um, it might be hard for me looking at these articles to put together a really high quality paper because they're not really related. If this happens, what you want to think about doing is adding another term to make your search more specific. So this could be a variety of things. You could look at a population, like you could look at health disparities that particularly affect LGBT people or college students. Or you could look at how health disparities relate to insurance. Um, for this example, I'm going to look at how health disparities relate to climate change. And when I do this search, you can see now I have 64 results. That's a lot more of a manageable number. And when I look through these, they have a little bit more in common with each other. This is a little bit more specific and more manageable. I also might decide, looking at this very first one, I might be like, I really want to look at how climate change affects the health of women. So I could try adding women. That might make my search too narrow, so I might get too few results. Yeah, so that's six. I could also modify my search. Like I could try women's health. Um, and if I found that that was too narrow, I could change it again. I don't think that updated. And I could try, you know, a more general term. Like if I wanted more results, I could just change this to health. So you can kind of see from the searches I'm doing you get different results with each search you try. So if you don't find what you're looking for immediately, 
Um, playing around with your search terms, trying different searches will oftentimes get you some results that work better for you. Um, and you want to keep your search terms specific and, um, you know, use more terms to sort of narrow in or um, less terms to be able to get more results and be more inclusive. So that's the basic idea. And one additional thing I just want to mention really fast is if you're starting from an inquiry question, so here's an example of an inquiry question that might be related to um, the search that I was just doing, you're going to want to identify the most important terms in your inquiry question, but oftentimes inquiry questions in include kind of vague or evaluative terms like better, outcomes, effective, things like that. These don't make great search terms in the database. So for example, if you wanted to look at an effective way to deal with a particular health disparity, you might just want to come up with something that you think might be a possibility and use that as a search term. So that's an example of how you can deal with that. Just to go back to my search, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is how to narrow your search to find the kind of results you want. One of the important ones that's going to come up for CO150, since you do usually have to use scholarly or peer-reviewed articles, is this scholarly peer-reviewed journal limit, which I'm going to go ahead and click on. This isn't perfect, so you'll still need to review the article and make sure it has the criteria of peer-reviewed or scholarly articles. In particular, sometimes these journals publish little news items or book reviews that are not full articles. So you're going to want to make sure it's at least a couple pages and does have the full format of a peer-reviewed article. But this limit can really help you get started so you're not looking through tons and tons of newspaper articles. Oftentimes you'll also want to adjust by date. Right now I have articles back to 1967. I do not want that. So I'll just make it from the past 10 years. You probably do not want to use this full text limit because you will be able to get any article you can find in this database for free, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, basically, that full text limit limits it to just articles we have in this database, which is not everything CSU has. And one more thing to mention about the limits, I'm going to get rid of my scholarly limit for just a minute so I can show you this. Under source types, you also have the option to limit to newspapers and or magazines. So that can be really useful if you're looking for those popular sources. So that's an option as well. So the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is once you start to find resources that you like, how can you get the full text and actually save the article? So I'm just going to open one at random. Um, opening an article will show you more information about it, including things like the abstract, which is a short summary of what the article is about. This is what you're going to want to read first to see if the article is a useful one for you to read. Um, if you decide that it is, you can proceed to getting the full text. Sometimes you'll see a PDF icon in the article that you can just click on, and this will bring up an article that you can print or save. If you don't see that, though, um, some of these articles don't have the PDF right in the record. I'm going to try to find an example of that. What you do is click on the screen Find It at CSU button. And I'm going to click on this one as an example and we'll check if we have the full text of this article. Some of these we do, some of them we don't. Um, this is telling me we do have the full text and it's available at Wiley Online Library. That's just a company name. But what I do is I click on Wiley Online Library and it redirects me to where we have the PDF. So the PDF is right here. I click on it, and that'll load the PDF that I can then print or save. If it ever happens to you that either, so there's my article, that either this link doesn't work or there's no full text listed, you still do have an option, and that's requesting it through interlibrary loan, which is this link right here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on interlibrary loan in this video, but the basic idea is if CSU doesn't own an article, we'll get a PDF of that article from another library and send the PDF to your account for free. Um, so it does take a couple days to process because it has to be processed by real people, but it is an option for getting articles that you really need. Um, if you want to do that, you can just go ahead and click on this link for the article you want and it'll walk you through the prompts and you can let me know if you have any questions. And just to go back to my article really fast, 
There is also this tools menu, which has some really great tools for like saving what you find. Like you can email it to yourself and um, if there's a PDF right there, you can go ahead and attach it to the email. You can also get quick citations. These usually aren't perfect. You usually have to proofread them, but you can see the citations in a bunch of styles so that you're not starting your citation from scratch. You can just go ahead and copy and paste it and then make whatever changes you need to do to make that citation accurate. And this permalink is a link back to this page that will work later. If you grab this one up here, it doesn't always work later. So those are just some options from the tools menu because you want to think about how to save the good articles you find so that you, know, you can use them for uh, your assignment and refer back to them later if you need to. So those are the basic strategies for um, searching in our databases. So this is my contact information. I'm the composition librarian. Um, in case you need to contact me, like if you're having trouble finding something or finding resources about your topic, I'm happy to help you with that. Um, my email address is right here. And um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.